Hi, welcome to Nursing School Explain and this series of the Nurse Interview Series and Playlist. Today I'm here with Christina Jacobson, who has spent all of her career in uh, maternal health nursing, women's health nursing. So, uh, Christina, hi, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, thanks for having me. Excuse the appearance. I'm in my son's room where the internet is better. No problem. Thank you so much for being with me and sharing your expertise. So to start with, how long have you been in the medical field or as a nurse or, or nurse midwife now? I have been um, a nurse for nine years, and then I've been a midwife for almost seven, so about six and a half years. Wow. So tell me about that nursing journey. Um, so it, it's kind of um, not a straight line. It was very um, crooked. I went to school for theater first. Um, and uh, I quickly learned that it would be very difficult to make a career um, in theater. And I've always been drawn to healthcare. So I um, then decided I wanted to be in the medical field in some capacity. Um, I started with, off being pre-med and I took chemistry and I worked as a phlebotomist in my early 20s. And then um, I became pregnant unexpectedly. Um, it wasn't intended or planned, um, so I went to the hospital I was working at, and I um, became, you know, engaged in the OB care there, and I had midwives, and I'd never, I thought midwives, you know, delivered babies in the woods under a full moon, like I didn't know, um, and I had such an incredible experience with the midwives in the hospital, and I was this is what I want to do. And so uh, the midwives um, there at that practice um, kind of guided me towards nurse midwifery, where I applied for an accelerated bachelor's um, in nursing and the master's program. So it was, um, you know, I, it, oh gosh, I started that in 2009 and I graduated with my first undergrad in 2003. So it's a six year journey <laughs> until I got there. So initially you said you worked in women's health for about two years and was that in at the hospital or an outpatient? Yeah, I worked um, at Hahnemann University Hospital in Philadelphia um, in their gynecology oncology unit for two years um, as an RN um, just to pay for life and to get experience as a nurse, um, which was invaluable. That's great. And so from there on, you took that accelerated program to get right into nurse midwifery then. Right. Well, so the accelerated part was just for the BSN. So um, it was 18 months and I got my bachelor's in nursing, became a nurse. And then the nurse midwifery is two years, the master's degree. I see. Okay. Excellent. So what does it take to become a nurse midwife? What's your day-to-day -day like? Well, um, hopefully you don't value sleep very much. I'm kidding. Um, it's, so I guess, do you mean the, the journey to become a midwife or just what my daily routine is? What's your daily routine now when you okay. go to work? So depending on where I'm scheduled, so I work at a hospital as a nurse midwife and we rotate between clinic days and um, labor and delivery days. So my eight-hour days tend to be in the clinic, and I am seeing prenatal patients, um, postpartum patients. We do a lot of um, contraception. We do dating ultrasounds. Um, and then labor and delivery would be, um, those are longer shifts. Those are 12 hours or 24 hours. And um, we triage laboring patients, pregnant women who come in with complaints, they feel like they need to be seen urgently or emergently, or if they think you're in labor, and then also managing labor, laboring patients and delivering babies. So it sounds like you really take care of the maternal health spectrum from the very beginning of the pregnancy, or maybe even trying to avoid it with the contraception counseling, and then all the way through the different stages and then through postpartum. So how many babies have you delivered now? I know you keep an account. 541. Oh my goodness. 
Wow. And you've been doing this for seven years, you said? Almost. Yeah. So my first year as a midwife, I didn't deliver any babies. Um, I've been working at the hospital that I'm at for five and a half years. So okay. in five and a half years, I've delivered 541 babies. So about 100 babies a year. That's a pretty good average, I'd say. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. So you have a lot of different experiences and interactions then I'm sure. What is that one interaction that really stands out to you that's like, that's that one patient I'm never going to forget? You know, I, when you emailed me those questions, it was, I was trying to think really hard and there are so many, like literally so many. Um, and with midwifery, I mean, you know, like I, you're correct, we we go through the lifespan from when a woman starts her period to when she's going through menopause. We take care of the whole woman through her whole reproductive lifetime. Um, and that's a really great thing about midwifery is it has such a broad scope. It's not just babies and pregnancy. It's so much more than that. So I have my stories for, you know, that you know, woman who had an unintended pregnancy and then my like counseling and contraception so that she can really take control of her um, family planning and reproductive life. Um, and my stories, you know, really sad stories where I've delivered losses or really happy stories where I've delivered rainbow babies. But um, I want to say that actually my favorite delivery my favorite patients are the ones, and this is gonna sound weird, but who really don't remember me it's because it's about them. The, the delivering of baby, a woman worked so hard to grow that child and worked so hard to deliver it. And as long as she had a really um, informed and good experience, and I would I like to be remembered as Oh, my midwife was great. She helped me a lot. I don't even remember her name or what she looked like. And that's fine. That makes me feel really good because that means that the experience was centered all around her and her journey and her delivery. And I'm, I'm just kind of like, oh, I was a good person in the, in the middle of the room. But really she, like mom is, is the hero of any, any delivery. So that's, that's my favorite part of what I do is just kind of making the all around experience just good for the patient and that she feels like a superhero and that's all she needs to remember. That, those are my favorite deliveries. And that's really admirable because, you know, there's so much, um, I don't want to say bragging, but there's so much responsibility too when it comes to delivering a baby. So I would imagine, and I don't have much experience in that field at all, but I would imagine there's um, a certain, maybe a competitiveness or something like that to it sometimes also, but you take more of this kind of like supportive role and really focus on the patient-centered care. It's really about the woman and more of the, the holistic experience rather than just going in for a quote unquote procedure delivering this baby, right? right. So yeah. this, is a, this is a great um, approach, I think, to, to nursing. Yeah, no, and I mean, that you being a nurse midwife, it really does encompass the whole, the, um, like, the nursing theory of, like, patient autonomy and pay, care of the whole person, the holistic nature um, of maternity care. It, uh, it really is, I think, the complete package because nurse midwives understand that pregnancy isn't just for nine, 10 months of a woman's life, it really impacts who she is as, as a whole person. And we like to take that into account and, and make sure that she's coping with everything, not just physically, but mentally and in her heart and her and everything like that. So um, it, it really is um, a passion of mine to um, give women that experience the same experience I got which I just empowered in their reproductive life and choices that that's really great and it's really following your own passion because you were inspired by 
these nurses and midwives that were taking care of you when you were in that situation. And so you're kind of like paying it forward again, yeah. I would call it. And that's also, I think a unique uh, role that we can play in nursing, whether it's an advanced practice nurse or you know the, the bedside RN that's right there for the patient. And that's, that's the beautiful part about nursing and that there's so many different avenues. So now that you're thinking about you, so you took a lot of education, what um, advice do you have if you think back when you were that new grad nurse and you were trying to kind of get your, wrap your mind around, um, you know, all the responsibilities that come with it and you didn't have a whole lot of experience yet. If you would tell new grad nurses or people that are still in nursing school pursuing that goal, pursuing that career, what advice would you share with them um, and give them, what do you know now that you wish you would have known then as a new grad? Again, one of those questions that I had to like mull over because I feel like there's so much. Um, so a couple of takeaways were that um, you're gonna cry <laughs> every other day and that's okay. Um, and to always ask questions. So I, if you are uncertain about anything, even if it, even if you feel like it's going to make you look silly or uneducated, just if you're not sure, ask the question. Um, I've worked with enough in, like, you know, where I work at the training hospital. So these new doctors, they, they're raised in this um, kind of culture, this medical culture that they have to know all the answers and they are hesitant to ask questions. Um, and I, also the nurses that I work with, if I'm like, please, doesn't, if you don't know the answer to something, ask somebody because you don't want to make any big mistakes. And everyone's going to make mistakes. And that's the other thing is we all make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes and that's how we learn. Um, but I, I just can't stress enough. If you don't know something, just ask, ask somebody who knows more than you do, because you don't want to make any big mistakes. Um, because obviously in any, any field, like something bad, you know, something can go be going well, 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 and then not all of a sudden. And that's definitely true in pregnancy and labor and delivery as well. So, um, yeah, it's always okay to ask questions. It's okay to cry. <laughs> You're probably going to cry at the end of every shift. Um, and sleep when you can. I remember that one was a big one. Just when you have a day off, sleep. Those, those are all great points. I always emphasize that with my students to asking those questions, right? And the other thing that I always say is nobody knows all the answers, right? We're only as good as the team as a whole that takes care of the patient. And um, somebody will know the answer and it might not be the most experienced person on the, in the department that you're at, but it's so important because like you said, mistakes can be made and mistakes will be made, but and nobody's gonna um, necessarily fault you for a mistake, but if you didn't answer or ask the question, and you made the mistake because you thought you knew, then that's much worse than asking the question and then maybe the patient still, the status will still change. So I think asking those questions and really being on top of it and don't be afraid to do that. That's that's the probably one of the most important teaching points that I pass on to my students also. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's going to make you a better nurse, obviously, you know, just to, to, to have those answers to, to pay it forward to the nursing student who comes in and asks you. So, um, and you're right, not everyone knows everything. So definitely, definitely use the big brains that are, that will be around you. Absolutely. So great. So it sounds like you have a very busy life with some of those like 12 or 24 hour shifts when you're right there waiting for babies to be delivered, which I imagine is probably one of the more enjoyable parts of your job. Oh, yeah. And then, so what do you do in your free time when you do have time? Well, when it's not 2020, I like to travel. I, <laughs> I tend um, to 
kind of un decompress and unwind by going on adventures. Um, so taking a trip out to the desert or, um, you know, going a few hours north to visit some midwife friends who live up, you know, on the, um, just about three hours north of, of here. Um, like weekend getaways, that kind of thing. It definitely helps to recharge my, my cup or my battery, fill my cup. That's what I'm trying to say. But right now, um, crafting. <laughs> I think you'll meet most midwives like to knit or use their hands in some capacity. Um, I'm, I like to knit. It's just, it's too hot in San Diego. So I tend to sew or I make like make earrings or I, I did crafty things um, to in 2020. That's what I've been doing. But that's great. So you found something that you're passionate about that doesn't necessarily involve or your, your first choice of the traveling, which you can't really do much right now. So great. And so is this something that you do for general work-life balance to traveling and then crafty? Is there other, is there any other, and are there any other things that you'd like to add that you would recommend for others to do too? So, um, I mean, it's, I feel like it's so hackneyed. Everyone already says it, but definitely like exercise, getting outside, um, taking a walk or a hike. It, it definitely does recharge the battery, um, helps to unplug from devices. So, and I, I feel like that's always the, the um, suggestion that's made to people. They're like, how do I find work-life balance? Like exercise more. And um, it's, I found that it really, I was not a believer. <laughs> I will say this, I was not a believer. I was like, no way, it's going to make me tired. And the last thing I want to do when I'm tired is go take a hike. But um, it's, I found that it really, especially right now, since I can't do all of the things that I would really want to do, it is a nice mini adventure, a little, a nice getaway from home, from daily life, from work, just you know, walking around, even in my neighborhood, just, it's just nice to unplug, get away, move my body and, um, you know, process the day, process my thoughts. So I found that that has really helped, um, especially this year. I agree with you. I kind of call it, like to call it sunshine therapy, getting outside. And then sometimes when you're deep in the books or, you know, you're working on something really hard, I like to also call it airing out my brain, right? Just to get outside and like you said, think about something different, get the fresh air and then unplug. I think that's the other thing because we're nowadays so confined to any kind of devices in front of us. We're confined to chairs. We don't move much. So this movement and interaction and just getting outside can be super, super important. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. Are there any last thoughts, anything else you'd like to add to prospective nurses or maybe even nurse midwives? Yeah, I mean, if this, like if becoming um, a labor and delivery nurse or if delivering babies seems like, oh, this would be so awesome, um, definitely seek it out. I mean, nursing at A in any field is a great career and we always need nurses. Um, we will always, babies are always born, so we will always need labor and delivery nurses, and we will always need midwives. Um, I would say for, I think, um, the great, if, if you're, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, but if you like challenges and you like um, unexpected things, kind of, but within a world that you know very well, so this is not quite like emergency medicine where anything can walk in the door. In OB, I mean, you're always going to have someone who's pregnant for the most part, or it's always going to be a woman with some kind of gynecological problem. So that's always the world you're operating in. But it is like the ER where it could be anything. A pregnant woman could come in 
for something as simple as my baby's not moving and it could be just as easy as oh we just need it was just taking a nap and we were scanning and we see enough fluid and everything's great then the next patient in the next room is delivering a baby and then you she starts bleeding heavily and hemorrhaging and you have to know how to manage that and kind of switching gears very quickly um, and really using you know all areas of your brain you know you're using um, you're quantifying blood loss and you are you know thinking who do I need to call who, who like, what other resources do I need but then also thinking about all right we're going to inform dad what's going on or we're going to assign a person to tell mom what's going on and kind of remembering that this is still um, a big event in, in someone's life and she needs to know. And so you're juggling a lot of, if, if you like that, if you like that challenge of kind of knowing um, how to take care of a patient as a human being, but also how to look at the biology and the science. Um, around taking care of this person. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, there are days that can be very exhausting, but it also is so fulfilling. And I, I would say every day, not most days, I, I come home and I'm like, I did a good job today. Like I, if I recount, I'm like, oh yeah, this woman had a baby. Oh yeah, she had a hemorrhage. She bled a liter, but I, I fixed it. It was fine. I'm like, I did that. Like that's, that's really incredible. Um, and so it's, it's very exciting, but I also like it that I don't need to know about appendixes or tonsils or the brain. I just need to know about the uterus and that, and, and I feel good about that. So, um, I think if you have a mind that kind of likes, you know, twists and turns and, and, Kind of action but also everything can also turn out okay in the end then it's a good field for you um so yeah we always need more nurses and midwives so anyone watching this we, we want you and we need you in our field yeah nursing i think no matter what area that you choose it's always going to be rewarding right you're going to have those days where you come home and you're like, I, I did this, I, I figured this out, I helped save this patient's life, I, I discovered that this was going on with the patient, whatever it might be, and there are so many different options out there, and that's the beauty about nursing. And yes, it's exhausting, and yes, you don't have a whole lot of free time because you work long shifts, but that interaction and that feeling at the end of the day when you come home and you say, I made a difference. I think that's what drives many people to this profession. And that's what's so beautiful about it. Yeah, it's so fulfilling. Absolutely. So Christina, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your expertise in women's health with us. I hope that um, some of the viewers will consider a career in women's health or maybe even uh, as a nurse midwife. There's plenty of opportunities out there. And as you heard from Christina, there are many different avenues and really taking care of women from through their whole reproductive life. So from the first period to menopause, which is really incredible. So thanks, Christina. And thanks for watching Nursing School Explained. I will see you soon. Bye.